Hi XR developers, in this video we're going to look at Cryptic Cabinet, one of Meta's flagship open source samples. It contains a ton of features and we're going to look at three of them today. We're going to look at how the objects are automatically placed in your room using MRUK, how the networking is handled using Photon Fusion, and lastly how it uses the pass-through API to apply different effects such as making the environment brighter or darker depending on the game mode. If you like this type of content, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon for all the source code of all of my videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our XR Developer community on Discord. And now, let's get started with Cryptic Cabinet. To get started, let's find the Cryptic Cabinet GitHub repo. Then we scroll down to Getting the Code and open our terminal. We first need to install Git LFS, or Large File System, to handle any large files from the project. We can do this by running git lfs install. We then go to the folder where we want to clone the project to and then clone it. Once it's cloned, we open it in the Unity Hub from the folder we cloned it to. Make sure to select the Unity version at least 2022.3.16 version or higher and make sure the platform is set to Android to avoid recompiling the code later. As mentioned in the GitHub readme, we can open the HTML files generated by DoxyGen there we can find, for example, detailed information about all classes used in the project. Alternatively, you can also find the Cryptic Cabinet project on the Meta Horizon store and install the experience directly from there. Let's go back to the GitHub repo and check how to set up the app in our own MetaQuest Developer Center. We log in, go to our apps, and then create a new app for Cryptic Cabinet. Next, we go to Requirements and then Data Use Checkup. We need to fill in the user ID and user profile. Also, make sure to complete the age group self-certification on this page. After filling in the user ID and user profile, we can submit. If this is the first time filling the data use checkup, you will be prompted to fill in some more information. After completing this form, it will take only a couple of minutes until everything is accepted. We can then finally go to deployment and select API. Here we can find the ID for our app. We can copy this number and go over to our project that should have been opened by now, we can go to Meta, then Platform, and then Edit Settings. Here we can paste the app ID into both Oculus Rift and MetaQuest. We can check Use Standalone Platform. This is helpful for debugging in the editor. It will connect to a debug platform using the information we fill below. This info will be our test user. We can go back, and under Development we can find Test User. Let's copy and paste its email address and type in the password. We can then log in. If you don't have a test user yet, you can easily create one. Keep in mind these test users are part of your organization and not just app specific. The next step is to set up your Photon Fusion app. For this, we need an account on the Photon Engine website. After logging in, we go over to the dashboard and create a new app. Select Fusion and give it a name and then click Create. Scroll down until you find your app and copy the app ID. We can then go over to Unity and go to Fusion, then Real Time Settings and pass the ID where it says Fusion. To run our app later, we just need a few more steps. The next step would be to upload our app to the developer center. To do this, we first of all need an Android key store. Each APK uploaded to the MetaQuest developer center must be cryptographically signed with a unique certificate stored in an Android key store to verify the app's authenticity, integrity, and developer identity. We can do this in the player settings. Make sure you remember where the key store is located. After that, we make sure that our app has a unique package name and bundle version code. Let's start the version code at 1. Every time you upload a new APK version to the developer center, you will need to increase this version code in the player settings. We can give our app a unique name, and then we need to make sure our Android manifest.xml file is correctly set up. Meta provides editor script for that. Just go to Meta, then Tools, and then Create Store Compatible Android Manifest.xml. After that, we can open our main scene and make our first APK. Once the APK is ready, we can open the Meta Quest Developer Hub, go to App Distribution, select our organization, and then the Cryptic Cabinet app. Here, we can also select which release channel we want to upload our app to. If you created the store compatible manifest, the upload should work without issues. If you are still running into problems, check out the troubleshooting guide of the shared activities in Mixed Reality. MR Motif Sample Project. After successful upload of your APK, we go to the Developer Center and confirm the age group. Next, we need to make sure everyone we want to play our game with is entitled to do so. You can either add them as member of your organization or add them to a release channel. In my case, I want to add the test user to the alpha channel. 
I copy the email and then go over to my app's alpha channel. Under users, I can paste the email of our test user. And now we can finally explore the project. For this purpose, Meta has created the new in editor tutorials. It either opens right after opening the project, or you can go to Meta and then Tutorial Hub and click on Show Hub. You will notice that the tutorial is generated from our Repos MD file. It offers a quick overview of the project without having to switch tabs. Let's quickly go through our dependencies. For this, we open the package manager. In this project, we use the Meta XR Core SDK, including core features for mixed reality development, such as pass through, anchors, and scene. Furthermore, it contains the Meta XR Platform SDK, which enables you to create social immersive experiences. In our case, we needed to check entitlement of players, access their names, and share anchors. Next, we have the Meta Mixed Reality Utility Kit, or MRUK for short. It replaces the lower level scene API and makes it much easier to program against the physical world, in this case, to place objects. To learn more about MRUK, check out the brand new MRUK documentation that teaches you everything about scene understanding and object placement. Then there is the Meta XR Interaction SDK and the Interaction SDK Essentials, used for controller and hand interactions and body pose detection. We are also using the Meta XR Simulator, which is a lightweight XR runtime, enabling you to simulate MetaQuest headsets and features on the API level, so you can iterate and test your experiences without a physical device. The project uses Unitask, which is a great tool that provides an efficient allocation-free async await integration for Unity. And lastly, of course, we have Photon Fusion installed to seamlessly support multiplayer modes and handle and route networking traffic in shared user experiences. Perfect, now let's finally explore our main scene using the tutorial hub. A cool thing about the hub is that we can directly highlight or launch components from within the hub. We can select and open our scene from here and explore its main components. As you can see, if we press on any of these components, they will be highlighted in the scene. Awesome, and this is all for the setup of Cryptic Cabinet and how to navigate Meta's GitHub samples. Let's now explore three of the most notable MR features in Cryptic Cabinet. We start with the room setup. This system uses MRUK and scene to scan the user's environment, extract scene primitives such as walls, floors, desks, and build a 3D grid of cells over each category marking free cells green and blocked cells red. Objects are then placed in five prioritized steps. Floor against wall, walls, desks, floors, and any horizontal surface. Sorted largest to smallest within each step. And any that fail to find a safe spot, get randomly assigned to a valid cell on their respective surface. After placement, the user previews colored boxes. Blue equals reachable, green equals visible, red equals invalid. Adjusting any red boxes manually before confirming the layout for fast reuse in gameplay. Three classes work together to place objects in a room using MRUK anchors. Object Placement Manager drives the high-level flow. Its start method calls an async init sequence that runs find floor wall location, find wall location, find desk location, find floor location, find horizontal location, and finally show visualizers. While shuffle placements, async reruns all those steps to reshuffle failed placements and randomly place failed objects gives any remaining items a random fallback on walls, floors, or desks before confirm object placements, cleans up and fires a callback. Under the hood, scene understanding location placer hooks into mruk.instance.scene loaded event in init to collect all MRUK anchor planes and volumes, feeding them into wall space finder, desk space finder, and floor space finder, and then exposes uniform APIs like request random wall location, request random desk location, and request random floor location for safe spots, plus methods to reset or toggle debug colliders across every surface. Finally, Floor Space Finder, as well as Wall Space Finder and Desk Space Finder, implements iSpace Finder by waiting for its floor mesh to be ready, calling generate cells to raycast a grid of cells with distance to edge data, using request random location to pick and optionally block a free cell via overlap checks, and calculate blocked area to mark cells beneath placed objects. Together, these systems let you reliably detect real-world geometry and place interactive puzzle pieces anywhere in the user's environment. Another notable feature of Cryptic Cabinet is how the light bulb and key interactions work. Both the key and the bulb props use a hybrid grab system that lets players handle them like ordinary objects until they're inserted, then constrains them to a single axis motion. Meta's interaction SDK transformers, such as one grab free transformer for free movement, and the one grab rotate transformer for rotation 
can't be swapped after a grabbable is initialized. So Cryptic Cabinet fuses their logic into a custom one grab toggle rotate transformer. It is the heart of this system. It combines the free movement logic of one grab free transformer with the single axis rotation logic of one grab rotate transformer, and it can toggle between those two states at runtime. While lock position is false, the object follows the controller. When the script sets lock position to true, for example, after the object enters a snap zone, the object's translation is frozen at a pivot, and only its configured axis rotates, with the current angle exposed through constrained relative angle. If the user pulls the object beyond unlock break distance, the transformer automatically breaks out of rotation only mode and returns to free movement. A screw snap zone is just a collider that represents the keyhole or bulb socket. It stores the currently inserted prop, current object, and raises events when the object snaps in, reaches full tightness, begins to unscrew, or is removed. Each key or bulb carries a screwable object component that ties everything together. On trigger enter, it freezes the rigid body, tells its transformer to lock on the snap zone's transform, and resets the rotation angle. On every frame while locked, it converts constrained relative angle into a percentage turn, lerps the prop between the zone's guide positions to create the screw in or screw out motion, and fires on screw complete when the max angle is hit, or on object start unscrew when it drops below the threshold. If the player yanks the prop out, the transformer's break snap logic unlocks it and restores free movement behavior. Cryptic Cabinet's pass through effect is driven by two collaborating singletons pass through changer and pass through configurator, plus a trigger volume for interior blackout. When the user flips on the UV light or orary projection, pass through changer flips its MUV active or M dark active flags and calls set pass through LUT elute ID darker room one, ensuring that if both effects are on, the blend is forced to full. Behind the scenes, pass through configurator, which is a network behavior, holds references to your default and darker room LUT textures as OVR pass through color LUT and OVR pass through layer and transition durations. Its set LUT, set opacity, set contrast, set brightness, and set saturation methods all start smooth coroutines that lerp the pass through parameters over time and call RPCs to propagate changes to every connected client. To handle situations where the user thrusts their head inside a physical prop, where URP's fade volumes can't darken the video feed, the blackout volume component adds a smaller on-trigger enter and exit collider around the furniture. When the camera enters, it toggles render post-processing on the universal additional camera data of camera.main, effectively blacking out the pass-through layer right in the middle of the geometry fade effect. All right, let's install our APK and try to solve this riddle. Alright, I hope this video was informative and you liked playing Cryptic Cabinet. If you like this type of video, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.